All right, guys, I want to quickly give you guys a quick little tip here in Blender Octane, something I've experimented with. I've been reading this PDF file. I've been reverse engineering about Blender Octane because a lot of there's not a lot of stuff about Blender Octane, but there's a whole bunch of stuff about Cinema 4D Octane, right? What I found was this really cool PDF file here, and it's basically light and admission in Octane for C4D. This thing blew my mind, and it talks about how Octane's renderer works with light. And one tip that I will give you right off the back work in real world scale. That's something you should be doing anyways if you're, if you're, if you're serious about do, um, doing 3D work. Always work at real world scale, especially in Blender Octane because the Octane Ranger is basically was de designed to work off of real world scale, I repeat, okay? One thing I found out, check this out. Here's how I typically would grab a bunch of lights, light up a scene here. I just do a quick scene together and this was my old style. I have two lights. I have one light here on the top and then I have one light here on the side. Basically, I'll show you the node setup here, but check this out. If I go from here, this is my old setup, same, same position, just different nodes. Check this out, boom, completely different. Lights are pretty much at the same intensity, just using different nodes. Let me go back. This is the new setup. This is the old setup. Really pay attention to right here in this darkened area here. Like we don't really see you know, a, a lot of data there. And then if I go to the new setup, same lights, same position, same pretty much intensity, like minute difference in intensity. Look at that difference, guys. One, two, okay? Let's see what's going on here. Here is the scene. Let me make this full screen for you guys. There we go. I got two lights here, one off to the side and one here on the top. They're relatively in the same position. If I go to my, my nodes here, and let me turn this one on. Here, you, if I tab them on and off, you can kind of see where they're at. They're fairly, they're exact, right? Now, the old setup, this is how I would basically make a light inside of Octane. I would literally come in here, go to lights, go to area light. Here's the light, GZ it up, right? There's the light. It comes in at three feet by two, uh, three. It comes in basically roughly three feet, a three foot box, which is good because, you know, a good, uh, dome from aperture will be about that size okay and then i'll go here and hit nodes and then this is the node setup that it basically defaults me with a basic default material and then that default material is plugged into a texture admission okay nothing crazy you control your power here 100 percent watts this works in watts so it's 100 watts okay so uh, from reading the, this paper everything power wise is in watts so that was my old setup and then i would just build my scene off of that and just use my intensity maybe add in a les on here in the, the dist in distribution to kind of give it that fall off and stuff okay right so let me go ahead and delete that if i quickly turn on it's going to slow my view my view down here my viewport because i'm screencasting if i turn this on let me make sure we turn off Here's my old setup. We can see our lights here in action, right? There it is. Let me click on one of the lights here and let me go ahead and kill that for now. Again, just to show you, here's my setup. Make it full screen, nothing special. Here's the new setup. Here's the default material, the diffuse material with the black body emission. I switch it to a black body emission. We have that in Octane, I mean, in Cycles. That gives us our that real world Kelvin scale, which you should be using also because it's just, if you really want to get that photogenic style looking photos or uh, renderings, right? So I've got that plugged in. And then um, here I've plugged in an LES, right? Into distribution. And then when you plug in an LES, Make sure you use an RGB image, okay? It won't work with anything else. And then from there, plug in a, a spherical projection. Once you plug in that spherical projection, make sure you turn the coordinates to normal space IELS, and that allows you to move the light around. Let me show you what happens if you don't do that because it, this kind of bugged me. I didn't, I couldn't figure it out why I was doing this. I think it defaults. Let me just go ahead and press backspace. Okay, this is what it defaults to. And if I come into the scene here, now I think I have uh, one light is off, right? Oh, no, no, no. See, it's in the object space. So this top light here that I'm on, if I move it, G, you can see it's like the LES file is like stationary. It's not adjusting to me moving this around. So that's when you come into object space, changes to normal space, boom. Now if I hit G, it moves with it. See that it moves with that. Okay. So make sure you do that. The way I'm moving those lights here, basically you add on a constraint to it. I have a constraint, a track two constraint. 
and boom, plug that in, select the light, and then there it is. And again, it, it contracts down to the object point, to the point of origin. So if your origin was in the center, it'll be more center. Like this why the side light is aiming straight down at the bottom because the origin is there. So make sure wherever your origin is set, if you want it to be in the center, set your origin to the center, okay? Then the next kicker was the real, the real spice on top of it. Let me check, let me just unplug this really quick because this is the golden node right here, right? This is the output, basically. The output, again, my uh, LE or whatever this IES, when I went and downloaded it, I actually took the real world specs from that light. And they said that the bulb that they typically, the output was 250 watts. I basically put it at 250 watts because again, I'm trying to replicate real world light fixtures, okay? And again, the size is not three feet, but hey, just trying to get those levels in that real world this, you know, it really helps to set it up. Without that, this, this spectrum node on here, I think I have one other light on there. Let me turn that other one off there. Okay, this is without the spectrum node. So this is basically just working off of the black body admission. I don't know all the, the, the wizardry going on behind it, but let me bring this article in really quick here. I was reading through this here and it really talked about how true color and the spectrum of light and all this science jibber jabber stuff it was suggesting that you should typically always use this if you're looking to get that real world lighting here so this gunalson texture i'm probably mispronouncing that whatever wrong here it's like it literally says here is basically because there's like a hue in the real world the visible light spectrum wavelength ranges from 380 to 720 nm, but in octane, it's it's been mapped to a scale of zero to one, or zero being violet, one being red. So, like this thing here is replicating the real color spectrum in, in light, right? I'll have the link down below. Read this article. Just this this page alone will school you up on how octane lighting system works the, how to clear up noise fireflies like it's crazy it's crazy so anyways enough of the jibber jabber anyways i'm so excited about this i just had to make this video unscheduled unplanned to show you guys this here let me jump back into octane so without that plugged in you would take this and the where you find this is you go into or i had to stop the render is just lagging too much you go down into textures octane textures and here it is spectrum magical wizardry <laughs> let me turn this back on here we'll turn the render on i got my straight up light here we can kind of see it's kind of bland but when, once you plug this into it let me go ahead and set this back to what it was at default okay i'm gonna go default so you guys can see what it's set at okay whatever it says waiting for image i also read don't do anything let it do what it needs to do this is a typical way if you want to crash octane while it's doing that waiting for image let it do its thing I read that that was like a key tip. They said, like, don't mess with it. Okay. Waiting for image, let it do its thing. Don't try to put any more inputs in or even do anything behind off scene. Okay. So look, when I plug that in, you can clearly see like, wow, what's going on here? Why is it all green? Because of this wavelength, this is the wavelength of light. Check it out. Like you can dial in any color naturally in the true spectrum of light. Okay. There's our, there's our UV. And then here's the width. Check it out. This is crazy. But anyways, typically, if you're looking for that white light, we're just going to put this to one and to one. He said to put it to one to one to one when you're using an LES and then control the output using the power and brightness. So I'll come in here and just take this down to well, as I think I was at point one to try to match with my other older lights, my other old light setup. OK, but just alone with this, with these two nodes, with the uh, the LES, of texture and then with the spectrum the fall off of light was completely different from what i normally my normal light octane setup just grab an area light on throw it on hugely different right like you guys saw in the the before and after shots let me go back to that just one more time to bring that up and show you again here's my old setup here's the new setup even just the fall off the way that with the les again you get you can really shape that light Look, there's there's no LESs in these. These are just straight area lights. And then with the LES, it really shapes that light, really giving that natural fall off. Uh, ooh, excuse me, sorry about that. Get out, try it here. I'll go to the node one more time if you guys want to screenshot this node setup here. Here it is. Um, I'm going to put the links down to where I've been reading about this information, particularly about the lights. And there's like all kinds of stuff about materials and it's it's all cinema 4d related but it's about octane's engine majority 
so you can i'm decoding that and putting it into blender so for payment for this please smash that like button or consider subscribing take a look at this video here i go through octane's displacement system which is another fantastic little feat of wizardry i'll catch you guys in the next one peace